Island of Jersey says it has frozen more than $7 billion worth of assets belonging to Roman Abramovich. You were, of course, amongst the oligarchs sanctioned last month by the UK, EU and others. As a result, Roman Abramovich has been disqualified from owning the Chelsea Football Club and his yachts have set sail for safer harbours. All across Europe, the EU's Freeze and Seize Task Force is enforcing sanctions against people and entities that are linked to President Putin's regime. So far, 30 billion euros worth of assets in only a month, says the scheme. It includes the boats, the helicopters, the fine art, the properties, and it's blocked nearly 200 billion euros of transactions. Didier Arendas is the EU's Justice Commissioner. Uh, the Commissioner is with me now. So, a good start a strong start, but now you need to go further, deeper, uh, and be, be, be more precise in a sense. So what's the next stage for the EU's freeze and task force for when you meet on April the 22nd? But first of all, it's to continue to freeze assets. So like you said, real estate, uh, money, but also yacht and other kind of uh, elements like artworks. And so we try to, to continue to seize more and more and to freeze more and more assets. It was the case in 15 member states, and we tried to do the same in the 27, and to don't give any safe harbor for the oligarchs uh, in other countries, like in uh, other European countries around the European Union. The next step uh, is to go to a confiscation, not only a freezing of assets, but a real confiscation by the justice. And that's important because if there are criminal activities in uh, relation but with uh, the, the, the action of the oligarchs, it's possible to confiscate, not only just to freeze, but to confiscate. It's no more an administrative process by the Treasury. But due to that, it's possible to transfer the funds to a common fund to support Ukraine. So that's the, the real next step, not only to freeze uh, with an administrative process from the Treasury, but then to organize a confiscation if there are criminal activities and to give the money back to the victims, to Ukrainian people. How far are you prepared to go to put pressure on other countries that are not doing seize and freeze? For instance, the Maldives, where many of these yachts have gone because there aren't extradition treaties, etc., etc. But let's face it, the EU has a huge influential ability, since so many of uh, European citizens go on holiday to the Maldives, to actually put pressure on places like that. No, no, we have started to push pressure on the different uh, uh, third countries with such a kind of possible behavior. And we are not doing that alone because we are working with our G7 partners. And I will say we have organized the, the way to freeze assets with, to give an example, our U.S. colleagues. We have seized and freezed a, a yacht worth $90 million in Spain on the request of the Minister, Department of Justice in the U.S. And we try to push pressure together on other countries to avoid, again, safe harbors for uh, right. oligarchs in such a way. And there are many ways to do that, of course, to push pressure, to explain that if it's not with a good collaboration, we will take some initiative to give a reaction on this. Now, I, what initiative? That's exactly the point, because the U.S. Treasury Secretary, um, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, today, you'll have seen it, says, we are not indifferent to those countries or third parties who do not support the sanctions regime. Now, you've just said we will take some initiative against them. So what's waiting for those countries that don't follow suit? Of course, they need to be on our side. If they are not on our side, of course, we'll take some uh, decisions in relation with that. The first one, of course, is to engage a dialogue and to ask to follow the same rules, to apply the sanctions, and at least to don't uh, give the, the opportunity to the oligarchs to circumvent the sanctions, that's the first element. But just to give an example, if there are some actions to help the oligarchs to bypass the sanctions, it's become to be a criminal activities. So we'll also ask to uh, the justice right. system to prosecute the people doing that. And for the states, of course, we will take uh, consequence of such a kind of position. And there are many possible consequences in our financial relations with those countries, about the facilitation for visas and so on. So we have a lot of pressure possible on all the different partners. But for the moment, I will say we have a good collaboration with a lot of European partners out of the EU. To give an example, with Switzerland or with right. Norway or with the countries in the Balkans. Sure, sure. But they're on your doorstep. 
They're on your doorstep and would suffer tremendous economic repercussions if the EU got nasty. I guess what I'm asking you, Commissioner, is can you say tonight that if you have to make an omelette by breaking eggs with relations with other countries in the prosecution of EU sanctions, will you do that? Of course. I said we are very ready to say that there are countries on our side, and not only the side of the European Union, but the side of the G7 countries, because we have put the same task force at the uh, right. level of the G7. And if they are not on our side, we need to take some decisions to give a consequence to that. Of course, it's the beginning of the process. Right. The most important element, of course, is to take more and more partners on our side. And I will say, we are not just working on the task force to freeze and seize uh, some assets. We are also working on the war crimes. Uh, you know that we have Eurojust at the EU level, and we have uh, worked with Eurojust, the International Criminal Court, and the Prosecutor General of Ukraine, Irina Venevitkova, to say that we want to collect together evidence of war crimes, maybe uh, crimes against humanity or genocide, because it's the competence of the ICC. And we will organize the best way to secure and to save the evidence, to give the possibility right. to the prosecutor in the ICC to organize prosecutions and one day to have a trial and maybe condemnations.